for so long I stood with my arms closed waiting for an answer to my prayers not to realize everything I prayed for was right there My vision was clouded by the storms on the rise. Too blinded to see what's right before my eyes. Oh, it was right there. Oh, it was right there. Right there all the time. Waiting for me. Nitty, you can keep that music playing for a little while. I want to say happy Friday to everyone and welcome you all to Breakfast of Champions. Um, here with uh, such a great group of individuals that just, you know, pursue uh, to, um, you know, get that relationship with right God in a place that maybe you've never been in before. You know, just, just, just with a show of hands. How many of you can say that your relationship with God has gotten much stronger since you've been in this room? Just raise your hand or uh, raise your hand in the chat or raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, that relationship with God has gotten stronger. Uh, anybody else besides Miss Regina? Show of hands, how many of your relationships, how many of you have noticed it? that your relationship with God has gotten a lot stronger. Miss Nene, Miss Delcina, yeah, Miss Chick, Miss Shannon, 
Miss Kathy, Miss Sheena, yeah. <laughs> Good night, but Donisha, yeah. Miss Latoya, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. You can't help but to get, you know, stronger when you stay in His presence. Uh, one of the things that He says in the Word is, "If you draw nigh to Me, surely I see you, Miss Felicia." Yeah, yeah. I see the many hands, Miss Delcina. Uh, but the Bible says, "If you draw nigh unto Me," He said, "I will draw nigh, draw nigh unto you." And that's the purpose of, you know, us coming together for times like this is that uh, we get an opportunity to see God through um, the lenses of others, you know, and it helps to uh, take a lot of judgment down. It takes a lot of um, that self-condemnation down because sometimes you can be sitting in a moment to me, I see your hand, Anita, I see your hand. Uh, you could be sitting in a place of judgment. Uh, upon yourself for so long and you can say stuck in a place too and it's only until you literally come into a space to where you start hearing man we walking this thing out every day you know I may not ever get to this thing called perfection of where I want to be but as long as I keep striving each and every day to get better and better and better uh, that's all that matters uh, y'all I'm, I'm going to tell you um what my walk with God does for me. Um, uh, it brings me uh, before uh, people that I probably would never meet and probably will, some of them will never see again. Uh, many of you guys know that I uh, Uber from time to time. And uh, yesterday I had a, uh, uh, awesome, a awesome opportunity to um, uh, take a gentleman um, to the Houston area. And that's where I am now. I stayed overnight last night. And a lot of time when I pick them up, you know, I'm, I'm waiting on God. As a matter of fact, it's two situations I want to kind of testify about this morning. I'm normally waiting on God for the Lord to, um, you know, is this going to be time for me and you? Or is this going to be time to share with others? You know what? And I normally let them lead the way. So I'll go back to yesterday. Um, the day before yesterday, I was Ubering. No, no, it was yesterday. It was yesterday morning I got now. And um, there was this young guy that I picked up in uh, close to my neighborhood. A little young guy. Couldn't have been any more than about 22 years old. And uh, he got in the car and um, he was just jolly, you know, just just excited. And so he got in and he said, Miss Merrill, how are you doing today? I said, I'm doing well. You know, and sometimes I don't know if they just speaking just to speak at the beginning or do they want to continue to keep going on. And so I could tell he was really trying to draw up a conversation. I think he wanted to, you know, kind of know how I was really, really doing. So I realized this guy wants to talk. So a little black gentleman. So I went ahead and started engaging in conversation and giving him the time and attention that he wanted. And oh, my God, he began to start sharing a story with me about um, how he loves people so much. And uh, he said, sometimes I don't know if people want to talk or not. He said, but I'm a big talker. So, you know, I think it's the only way you're going to really uh, be able to uh, engage properly with people is that you just jump out there sometimes. And, and sometimes they'll let you know whether they want to talk or not. But I just love talking so much that, you know, I'll just kind of step out there, you know, in advance or so. And I told him, I said, well, keep that quality with you. And I said, you have such a sweet spirit about yourself. You know, don't let anybody stop you uh, from, you know, whatever. And y'all, they live in a very, very uh, ritzy like neighborhood. And so the gentleman, you would think you know, that this little boy was probably going to school, going to college or whatever. I said, so are you in school? Because he looked like a little boy at first. And then he finally told me how old he was. I said, are you going to school? He said, no, ma'am, I, I decided not to go to school. I said, what do you mean you decided? He said, school, it's just not for everyone. He said, Ms. Merrill, I didn't like school when I went there, when I was going before. He said, and graciously, my mom and dad didn't um, didn't exchange words about it. You know, my mom is of the opinion that she wants us to live the best life that we can live. And, you know, that's just not for me. And I said, you know, I think as you go along, you may find it to be useful for you later on down the line. But right now, you know, let your joy take you into some great places because I really believe it can open up the door for you, you know, and just continue to keep witnessing. Then I found out he was a believer. And I said, keep witnessing and 
you know, listen for cues from God. The Lord will tell you what he wants you to do, where he wants you to go. I said, but whatever it is, you're going to be talking to people, whatever it is. So anyway, that was one. And then yesterday, I got a, I have this thing to where I do a long distance ride from time to time. And that's when I want to go and listen to a message. I want to draw closer to God, you know, because on those long rides, I can put my ear pods in for, or my AirPods in for a long period of time. And so I'm thinking, all right, we gearing up because you're ready to go to Houston. Y'all, I went home, took a bath right quick and, you know, got all my, my things together and had a lot of things that I still needed to do. I said, Lord, let me make sure and pack everything. I got to be back at home by a certain time, all of that. So I was ready. I was gun and ready. And then I get this little Indian guy in the car with me. Y'all, from the moment we left Dallas, Texas, to the moment we pulled up to his house, which was four hours later, I had the best conversation. I learned all about India. He learned about the United States. We learned, I learned about what they eat, what they like, what they do, you know, what's the difference. And he taught me a lot about the visas and, you know, how long they get to stay over here and, you know, what it's like when their parents retire. Uh, what kind of professions their parents, uh, you know, parents have. He talked about how they take care of their parents when their parents get old. And y'all, it was just, I think we both were in tears by the time we got through with each other. And I think it was the last moments, and he's the second guy that I've seen do this. And uh, at the last moments, he got out of the car and he said, Miss Marilyn, he said, uh, I'm never going to forget you. I said, you know what? I was just thinking the same thing. I said, every now and then I meet people along the way that, that I'll never forget them. And y'all, I noticed when he got out of the car, uh, y'all, he was trying to give me an apple. He said, because I know you're hungry. We didn't stop to eat or anything. And I said, no, you can take it. He said, no, take it as a gift from me because I know you're hungry. So anyway, he went on, he gave me some money and he said, be sure to get you something to eat. And he turned, when he, when he turned around and left, he kept, you know how a kid does, they turn around and keep looking and keep looking. And he kept waving by Miss Marilyn, by Miss Marilyn. And I said to myself, cause he probably knows he won't see me again, you know? And it's just, it's just times like that, that I can tell that, God is shutting down some things in my life and he's introducing me to new things, you know, because you've only seen a little bit of the world. Cause he told me, he said, Miss Miller, you ought to travel. You ought to go see the world, you know? And he said, and you know, he was just telling me about different things. So he started calling out different places. And uh, he told me, he said, you need to go visit Spain, you know? And uh, it was another place. He told, it was a couple of places he told me that I ought to go visit. And I said, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to put that on my bucket list. So I'm saying that even this morning, that 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 communion and that private time with God, God will, God will take you out of a space that you've been in, and he'll put you into something new, and you won't even know how you got there, you know. And sometimes it's just being kind to people. But, you know, my relation, it helps, my Ubering helps me um, go deeper even with my relationship with God. I don't care what nobody says. Ubering is anointed. I've been doing it for four or five years. And I can't say not one time that it has not been an anointed experience. And anybody I turn on to it, they say the same thing. It's got to be an anointing on Ubering. I say, I don't know who created, I don't know who the young guy is who created it or whatever, but it's an amazing opportunity. So that's just a little bit of my spiel as to, you know, drawing close to God. Sometimes God brings people in our lives. Uh, sometimes he allows us to go through situations, you know, but whatever it is, use it as an opportunity uh, to sometimes shut some files down because sometimes we can be have things a little too loud going on with us and God has a way. I think that's what our message this week has been about the power of partnership. Just never know who God is going to bring into your life to partner. And I just thank God. I was listening to the gentleman yesterday, Mr. Zag. Uh, Mr. Andrew, and um, I thought about even uh, that power that came in when I met uh, Zach, because uh, Zach is like my spiritual son. It was it was love at first sight with Zach. You know, um, I'll never forget the way he he came into my Bible study class and just sat there, 
He just sat there on the floor, um, you know, sat there on, on the pew. And I'll never forget there was another gentleman. Uh, Y'all may wonder, how did Miss Marilyn meet all these people from different states and things like that? Um, there are people, there were people that came to my Sunday school class uh, back at uh, New Life Worship Center that I knew that it was partnership that we were going to have with one another. And when we all went our separates, because some people took other jobs or whatever, and the way that I met uh, Dr. Nisa Jenkins was from somebody from my Sunday school class, the gentleman from um, Milwaukee and um, Wisconsin. He was from Wisconsin. Uh, he used to come into my uh, Wednesday night Bible study class, my Sunday morning, yeah, Wednesday night Bible study class. And he would come literally sit in the middle of the, sit, sit on the floor, there were no more seats in the room. And he would literally sit on the floor and grab everything that he could. And I didn't know that years later that it would be a powerful partnership. This gentleman has introduced me to people all over the world. You know, see, sometimes when you start just opening up your mouth and you start connecting with people, you don't know who God is, who, who that person is connected to and who that person is connected to, who that person is connected to, but it's that power of partnership that takes place. So this morning, I'm going to see if I can grab a few other mentees and individuals and uh, see if I can impart some things into their lives and them into my life. Uh, I'm going to welcome Mrs. Kathy Mitchell, Mrs. Latoya Hansen, and Mrs. Re Regina Oliver and Joyce Lynn. Look like four of us or five of us are going to be on the stage today. So I want to welcome these ladies in this morning and we're going to have a conversation about receiving help. Hmm. That's going to be a good one there. So I'm going to see if I can get everybody pinned in. Good morning, ladies. How are y'all doing? Good morning. Doing good. Everybody's doing good. Good morning. Hey, man. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Kathy, Mrs. Regina, and Miss Latoya. I'm trying to find everybody, y'all. That's why I'm moving a little slow. Miss Latoya, I'm going to add you in. Then Mrs. Joyce Lynn, I think she's the last one. Joyce, let me find you on the page. There you are. I see you. I have to add y'all to my page so I can see you. This is a beautiful bouquet right here. I love it. Miss Regina, I think you own two cameras. So let me get the right okay. one in here. There we go. Let's get that one out. Well, good morning and welcome to our Breakfast of Champions this morning, our time for mentorship. Everybody doing okay this morning? Yes, we are. Yes, ma'am. Y'all look beautiful. Wow. How have y'all felt about the message on this, the messages on this week? How have they, have they been very impactful to you guys? Yes, ma'am. Well, with me, you know, you don't take them to perspective about how many um, facets of partnering it is, you know, and that when you're partnering, it's, it's certain things that you have to look for, you know, so it put a lot of things into perspective this week as far as, you know, partnership, just how many, how much it encompasses uh, as far as home life, work, yeah. friends, just everything in general. So, yes, it's been very, very helpful for me. Yeah, that's good, Regina. Anybody else? Yes, it just, um, like Regina was saying, it also, it just kind of helped me just to just put it in perspective that every day uh, we encounter people um, there's certain things that we should look for and um, and we have to partner up with people the importance of partnering up with people and the right people we have to ask God for discernment because we don't want to partner up with the wrong people um, so it's just uh, really important for that yeah yeah so you, that, that reminds me of how um, sometimes we um, not sometimes all the time you know, we have a desire uh, to be in the company of others, but you have to ask God for permission to be with people, you know, uh, because we can easily jump into situations and not realize, you know, because sometimes we're talking about receiving help this morning. We can be crying out for help. Lord, I'm tired. Lord, can you send me some help? Mm -hmm. And then he mess around and send some help and it's not the right help that you need. So, yeah, that discernment is going to be good. What about you, Miss Kathy? What are some of the things? I mean, how is has this blessed you on this week as well? Yes, ma'am, it has. Um, I'm just kind of piggyback off of what they're saying that so many facets to a uh, partnership. You know, I've never really thought about it like that. And um, it was really good, especially the part for the uh, partnership by sharing. 
you know, yes. um, you can overshare and you can undershare. And then, you know, you just, once you start talking to other people and seeing where they are and um, just actually, you know, getting to know people, it's kind of like um, you just talked about your Ubering, you know, that was yes. kind of like partnership, you know, in a sense, you know, so yes, ma'am, I've enjoyed it this week. Yeah, that was, Kathy, because, you know, it's it's nothing like seeing the world through somebody else's eyes, you know, and y'all, you could tell that there was such an anointing that was there, because it's, you know how, what's that saying, when E.F. Hutton talks, everybody listens, <laughs> it was like, every time he opened up his mouth, I was like, at attention, I wanted to know all about it, and y'all, they eat goat, <laughs> oh, <God>. like, <laughs> They don't eat they, they don't eat the meats that we eat over here and you know that's like a delicacy for them you know and wow. uh, I just yeah, can't I imagine <laughs> I can't imagine it so yeah Miss Joyce then what about you oh yes ma'am everything has been great this week with this topic um I think for me it's still like just being in collaboration with different people and just you know, piggyback off of ideas and what we have in common and our different experiences. And I think I mentioned earlier this week that even though it may seem every situation may be different, but something about it is still the same and we all can learn from it. So, yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. I think I want to start right there. You use that word collaboration. <laughs> I know, I think it's like my favorite word this year. <laughs> <laughs> that is so. something. Robin said goat meat is big here on Maryland Eastern Shores. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> now oh. listen, that's a that's that's a uh, uh, I don't know about all that. <laughs> but uh he, he said it tastes like chicken. That's how you know. <laughs> he said y'all's chicken tastes what? like he said it tastes like something very flavory or whatever. That's <laughs> okay, right. I'll take your word for it. But uh I want to go to that word collaboration, you know, and that is something that we use in the business world a lot, you know, mm -hmm. learning how to collaborate with others. And, you know, you, you may you may think that uh, that means just joining forces with people, but you have to know the area that you need help in, mm -hmm. you know, uh, collaborating and joining. And, you know, and I think that when the Bible says that my people are perishing, uh, for a lack of knowledge, and even where there is no vision, we're going to perish. That collaboration calls for vision as well, uh, because there are sometimes uh, things that God has called you to do, and then there are things that God may be calling other people to do in your life, and you have to learn how to reach out uh, for the help that you need. You can tell when the right help has come your way, because the right help always brings addition. Not only does it bring addition, it brings multiplication, to be honest. It, it never just adds to your life. It brings multiplication. It helps you to move faster. It helps you to see things more clearly, you know, and helps you to go forward. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, have any of you um, had uh, times in your life where uh, you have found um, joining with other people uh, to be helpful to you, whether it was your marriage, uh, whether it was a relationship that you've been in, and how did how did you find that uh, to uh, help you to grow in life? Either one of you. Um, I guess I can go real quick because I'm in that space where I'm receiving help um, with in my marriage. Um, we've always kept our finances separate for the longest time and then we just decided to try to merge them together well right now and this time my money is pretty on the low end so my husband is, is in the midst of you know helping me out and that's new for him uh and it's new for me because I've always been independent so just receiving that help from him has kind of been like oh you know I don't know and I feel like I owe him back but at the end of the day like we're married is, is that supposed to be something we've already, you know, be doing, you know? So that's where I'm at right now as far as, um, I guess you could say collaborating in my marriage. <laughs> that's interesting, Joyce, uh, because um, I, I it, well, let me put it like this. It's interesting, but it's not uncommon. 
Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of people that don't join uh, their finances together for whatever the reason is. But I love the way that you're taking us down a journey, even yourself, uh, of how that feels to come from an independent uh, standpoint mm -hmm. and to have to have your spouse to come in. We call it bail us out. That's what we call it. We <laughs> well, yeah, that's that. exactly what yeah, that is. Yeah, coming to bail <laughs> us out of some stuff. And, and then to... Um, you know, I think one of the things that we're always uh, kind of cautious of is that they don't throw it back up in our face later yeah. on that you had to do yeah. this or that, you know, so, how, you know, is, is that, you, you know, being independent, uh, we, we can be mouthy when we're independent. Very. You know, because I got my own, you don't tell me what to do. And, you know, don't be over here clocking my dollars and all that kind yes. of stuff. And now that you happen to <laughs> happen to receive some help, how yeah. has that silenced you as a wife? It has humbled me as a person, <laughs> not just as a wife, you know? Um, and I guess that comes from just even, not just from being independent, but just being a prideful person previously to be like, oh, well, if you don't want to do it, I'm going to get it done myself. And I think God is just like, uh, you know, that's not... That's not what we're going to do here. You know, at the end of the day, y'all are married. And then even for Mac, you know, it's hard for him to give money to anybody because he's been <laughs> burnt as a, as a business person, you know, just as a, a friend, you know, not receiving money back from friends or family. So he's already adamant about that. So I, I believe God is working with both of us right now. Him learning how to give freely mm -hmm. to his wife and me learning how to receive from my husband. Oh my God, that you know, I think that would probably be a a, a challenge. It's a topic for me. With, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we need to talk about that topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that probably would be a challenge uh, because um, I'm not used to y'all. I, I remember, and it, this may be weird to uh, even look at like this. I remember when I got married and. Um, I wasn't used to any, well, let me take that back. I was used to, but I, I had never been married before to where, um, you know, y'all shared things together. And I, I did, I did some, I don't know, I was trying to do a, a helpful thing uh, by making sure I'd heard store, all kinds of stories about how women, you know, bankrupt men and they always mm -hmm. taken from them. And I never wanted to be that type of wife. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to be that kind of friend or anything. And I remember when I got married and, you know, I was sharing with my husband about, uh, I didn't understand that concept of bringing all the money. I didn't understand the conversation to have behind bringing all the money together. So I wanted to start being real nice. And I was like, well, Emmett, you know, we don't have that many bills. We don't have a lot of bills. So you know, if we can just bring such and such, you know, to the table together or whatever. And I'll never forget, Emmy was like, that's all. And because it was obvious that, you know, everybody he had ever been with had taken so much from him, you know, all the time. And uh, that was a hard pill to, it was, it was hard to even receive, I think, I think from him, uh, because he had never seen anybody just being that kind. And I said, it's not fair, because you have a daughter, you have a son, they still have to be taken care of. And we came from two different worlds and we got to find a way to blend these things together. I don't know if we ever just got it together or not, but I understood what I was trying to do. I think on a, a flip side of it, I understand more about partnership now, about bringing everything together at the door, but those are conversations that you have to have. I think you have to go into a deep conversation about finances, what your finances are looking like, you know, um, maybe how you grew up looking at money. Um, Y'all, I'm even at the, at the place when it comes down to partnering with mates that <clears throat> I'm very careful uh, that they be tithers, that they be givers, because either you got givers or you got takers. And if they not given, they take it somewhere. And that's going to make things very unbalanced. So I'm learning that in my conversation to make sure to speak up about those things, because these are not things that I want to come in and uh, wreck the relationship later on down the road. So, you know, uh, be, I mean, I love your braveness of talking about that while you're in your marriage. And I thank God that you have the husband that you have, Joyce, you know, to yeah. help you to walk through those things. Uh, ladies, yeah. any of you other ones have any, any um, maybe some thoughts 
behind, you know, people that you've had to collaborate with or partner with and, you know, what that may, what that may, you know, look like to you? Mm, well, me, just mine, basically, it's probably with my husband as well. Um, as far as just like collaborating um, with me on things inside of the home, because in like my past relationship, you know, it was just, you know, like back from in the olden days, you know, the woman, she's the one that does all the cooking, the cleaning, the washing, you know, everything, you know, um, yeah. to, it's, it's, it was so refreshing to, to get with someone who, co who collaborates with you on all of it, you know, shares all the duties, you know, it's not just, okay, you got to cook dinner. It's whoever comes in first cooks, That's you know? Right. Yeah, he'll, like he could be at work uh, and come in from the oil field. So, and he looks so cute too. I come in and he's standing <laughs> in the kitchen at the sink, still got his Air Force C's on washing dishes, not saying a word, you know? I'm, I'm the one coming in uh, fussing because my kids, you know, I done left that morning kitchen clean we come home it's a sink full of dishes where they done had friends there uh eating and drinking everybody getting a different cup all day you know so <laughs> it's, it's it's just nice to have collaboration on all of that and actually that and it's so funny that collaboration um has grown him because when we first met he cooked everything on high everything he burned up now he's turning to he's turning to a real good cook you know when i come home last night i had roast I had uh, yes, ro roast Brussels sprouts. Um, he did some kind of uh, potatoes that I I don't even think I can make them. You know, I was like, hey, what <laughs> you put in these potatoes? And he was like, just milk, butter, and sour cream. I was like, well, they look amazing, you know. And Aww. so it's, it's just nice to have collaboration on just basic day to day things to where you don't feel like you're the maid, you know, because mm -hmm. you it's like when you go to work and you work all day. You know, I got I got. I go to work at 10 in the morning. I get off at eight if I'm lucky. You know, my shift is 10 in the morning to eight at night, but that 10 in the morning might turn to eight or nine in the morning to nine, 10, 11, and 12 at night. So it's nice to, you know, to come home and not have to worry about leaving work and coming back home to work, you know? So, and then my husband, he like, just take a bath and go to bed. You know, that was not the case in the past. You know, it doesn't matter what time I got in, how tired I was. I had to get in there and, clean and cook and you know I could be keep the house clean and then I come back in and uh carpet fresh is, is sprinkled down I just vacuumed yesterday my goodness you don't have to vacuum every day you come back in I'm walking on snowflakes huh yeah walking on snowflakes so it's just it's just so refreshing to have somebody that collaborates with you on that sense so that's good uh Regina and and I love the way uh you talk about your spouse you know um it, it sounds like you know, uh, that there, there's a heart of gratitude that you have for him, you know, and a lot of it uh, possibly comes from when we did not have that before, you know, uh, that that's what uh, Brian Courtney Wilson, he said, he realized the things that he prayed for is right before him now. And he said, now that I know, I think I want to thank God for it. I want to thank him for it. So every time I hear you, I do hear you thanking God for uh, the, the, uh, the journey. That's what I hear. It's the journey that you've gone through and, uh, being able to, um, um, share about what God has done on so many levels. I want to ask you something before we go to the other ladies there. Um, you know, coming from maybe a relationship that was not so good before, um, there are trust factors that come in. You know, um, though we want to uh, move forward with relationships, the trust factors come in in such a place to where um, I'm having to, you know, like, let's let's take the cooking, for example. You know, um, you're having to put everything. I know, and in order for him to learn how to cook, you had to teach him how to cook. Because if, <laughs> if he had to go high, that means he didn't know how to cook. <laughs> so, but you've taken out the time to share those things with them. What was that experience like slowing your mind down long enough to say, you know what, I think I want to partner with this guy so much to where if it's something that he does not have, I want to give him what I have, even if it's my recipes, teaching him about to cook. How did, how, how, what was that process like slowing down so that the other person could catch on board with you where you were? 
Well, um, to be to be honest, like when when um, me and my husband got together, like we had a lot of long conversations. We had a lot of the like hard conversations. And as far as like, you know, the trust part, you know, he was letting me know, like that's in the past. You can't worry about that. You can't compare what went on in your previous relationship. You have to, you know, look, look at what's going on today. You know, as far as that, as far as the trust part goes, you know, you gotta stay focused and just, just know that if I'm with you, I'm with you. You don't have to worry about this, that, the other, you know. Um, and that was, that right there was, you know, good to hear. And as far as like teaching him how to cook, yes, I, you know, I, I got in that kitchen with him, you know, I was like, baby, now you can't do everything on 10. You can't, <laughs> you got to what, what you want to do is you want to start it off like on about eight, and then you want to bring it down. You want to bring it down to like six, you know, that way you won't cook it so fast, you know. It's done on the outside and 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 raw in the middle. So, you know, and it was it was just, and then it's 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 so cool, you know, because like he's like this OG, you know, but it's so uh it's so fun to see like how excited he gets about cooking and He's learned how to, you know how to, how it goes, Miss Marilyn. You know, somebody can teach you a recipe or teach you how to cook something. Then after a while, they're making it better than they you. They make it better than you. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and he mainly does like, you know, most of the cooking. Like when we have get-togethers and stuff, and people come over, you know, of course I do cooking. But he's in here, and he kind of make me mad. Hey, wait a minute, because he'll be like. Make sure you do so. I was like, hold on, I'm the one taught you. <laughs> you know, cause, he, <laughs> Cause now he's the man, he knows what he's doing. He tell me, do this and make sure you do that. And did you put that on there? And you know, you gotta do this. I'm like, yes, baby, I know. Remember, I'm the one that taught you, so. <laughs> <laughs> So funny. Yeah. So yeah. That's that's good. You know, uh, you know how um I've I've been listening to uh Bishop Blake's. So I don't know if all of y'all listen to him or not, but Bishop Blake's been on it, boy. He mm -hmm. he on people back about stuff about that humility. You know how it is sometimes when he said you gotta keep you gotta keep a teachable spirit about things. You know, how many times do you find yourselves, you know, even and, and you may have to catch yourself with that, like I already know that. I already know that, you know, it because a lot of times when people are trying to tell us stuff and they telling you like you wasn't the one that told them that and then you have to just kind of humble yourself and say I know I know yeah, you know you. And, and 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 let them think that it was their idea in mm -hmm. the but you already know that I just gave you that recipe last night okay you got that one on me <laughs> I want to move to Miss Kathy over. Miss Kathy been married forever. <laughs> See, I remember her and Terry back back in the, woo, the grade school. That's what I want to call it, grade school. And being with somebody so long, Kathy, you know, do you still struggle with receiving help from your husband from time to time? Yes, and we go back and forth and... um it's kind of like what you just said, you know, I taught you and now you try to tell me how to do it or whatever, you know, back and forth. But um, yeah, and like you said, we've been married a long time and we had to um, walk that thing out. You know, it, it didn't start like that. So um, just like Miss uh, Joyce Lynn said about the uh, money situation, you know, I'm, he's more, uh, it's, it's a good word instead of saying cheap. I would say conservative and I'm not, you know, I'm just, I'm not frivolous, but I, you know, you, like you say, you see it, you want it, you buy it, you know, if that's mm -hmm. what you want to do. But then um, even with the girls, you know, um, my granddaughters, you know, uh, you know how things have gotten so high now, you know, and um, every time I pick them up from school or summer camp or something like that, they always want to go and get something to eat, you know? And so, and Terry, I always say, is food here? They can eat food here. And, you know, and it's just, it's so much quicker for you to just go and pick it up and bring it home, you know. And then they always say, ooh, Papa at home, because they don't want him to know. <laughs> <laughs> that means we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and so, um, just, you know, and, and uh, taking on, um, that when you say collaboration uh, with others, you know, you have to consider, you know, the other person too also, and especially when, you know, you're in a relationship, not just marriage, but, you know, in friendship and 
um, he was talking about uh, Bishop Blake, and he was talking about being humble. Um, you know, that comes into play also, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just being humble before that person, just like you said, if they're saying, telling you how to fix something like Miss Regina was saying, you say, wait, I, I taught you where you I have to, you how to do it. Uh -huh. Yeah, you still have to be humble with, you know, saying, okay, yeah, you're right. And, you know, you don't want to give them that credit and say, yeah, yours, yours do taste better than mine or whatever, you know, but you just humble yourself. But um especially like you said with the um just coming in together with um partnership in uh everything not just food but money um time spent with somebody a long time you know you don't want to yeah. overcrowd somebody you know and just hover over them just because you're married i don't have to spend my every hour on the clock you know with someone too also so yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that just amazes me, y'all. I'm I'm in the background looking for this picture. I have a picture of uh, Kathy and Terry uh, that I want to share in just a little bit. Uh, and it it when every time I look at it, I wonder what's the story behind that. You know, the way Terry looks at Kathy. I'm I'm getting to it right here. <laughs> the way he looks at her. Um, I just, I, I've always, th this, this picture here, it always, um, told a story to me. I'm going to share this here. <clears throat> Do you remember this, Kathy? Aww. Yeah. It always told a story to me about, um, he seems to have always had a love for you and, uh, the smile that's it, it it's like I can trust you you know I can trust you to be there for me I can trust you through the good through the bad you know through all of that and you know it, it was so many of the the pictures here when we looked at the relationships and how this was one Mrs. Judy and her husband uh, these two had come back together after many many years they had a son together and had come back together to remarry. And I just kept thinking about the stories that they, you know, once told themselves. And, you know, uh, this lady here, uh, her husband passed away, you know, after so many years. And I've always wondered what, what is the story behind uh, everybody's dreams and the things that they have gone through, you know, all of that, you know, and I wanna kind of go there for a moment, Kathy, when we talk about that, um, uh, being able to receive help, you know, with that. When God puts two people together, you know, do you ever think that y'all gonna need each other like that to death do you part? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I feel what you, what's happening now, Kathy. Um, y'all, Kathy's going through a situation now uh, to where partnership is key. Um, her mother-in-law is very sick, very ill, and um, this is a time to where um, you're having to really pull together, you know, with a lot. Um, Kathy is, is having to drop off with us for a little while, not, not, I hope, hopefully not off the line, but she's going to step back and take her place with her spouse and uh, to be with him during this time, and, you know, you don't think about those kinds of things when you first marry somebody, you know, because everybody's healthy when y'all get together at the beginning, hopefully. And then you think about it, it's been years that's passed along and it's like, we doing this together too. We're going through this, but I think about it. Uh, Terry walked through it with you too, with your mom, you know, Amen. and, Amen. and Kathy does this, um, does this bond you guys together even stronger now? Oh yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's it's actually um it's bringing back memories for me because I stood where he's standing now, and um you know I have to be strong for him, and and I I I've not taken on the responsibility or anything. You know I'm still letting him do you know what he has to do for his mom, but you know I still want to be there. For him as far as decision making and and facing the truth you know um you know they they have the medicine for people to get healed 
but sometimes medicine is not going to do it. So you have to face the truth of that. You know, um, you can uh, make decisions to uh, do all the things that the doctors say do, but then there's a time for you to just say, you know, we're we're not doing any of that anymore. Mm. You know, um, mm. we're just going to have to let God make the final decision. And and they all have come to the conclusion that, you know, what the end time might be, but God still has the final say. Yeah. You know, we pray and we trust God. And mm. um, like I said, you just have to, um, you uh, all hands on deck, yeah. <laughs> partnership. Yeah collaboration it's all in there together from mm-hmm. everybody not just me and terry you know she she belongs to everybody so it's all hands on deck that's where we are right now yeah these these messages come in so handy yes, we yes, just ma'am. we just sometimes don't realize we walking right in the middle of these messages and it's like all right i'm learning a lesson that i don't have to have my hands on everything i don't have to control everything let everybody play their part and what they cannot do, we don't fuss about it, you know, any of that. And it's just receiving that. One of the things that I have learned over life period, uh, there, there are times where we feel people ought to know what needs to be done. Just cause people know don't mean they do, <laughs> you know? And uh, I, think, I think it's a question of servanthood uh, God is going to call on the one that he has poured the most into, you know, the one that has recognized that the Lord has poured into them. And that's where that helping and coming to serve uh, plays a part. And we get a chance to be the hands and, and feet of God, because sometimes we don't feel like helping. And we don't feel like even, um, you know, sometimes we don't feel like receiving help either, because we don't feel like the mouth that comes behind the help with it, you know, and uh, it can actually um I don't know, take us through a number of things. I want to kind of go to Miss Toya, and I think this is circling around just right. Uh, Mrs. Latoya being a nurse, um, this is her vein to help everybody else all the time, you know, being of assistance to them. And Latoya, how hard is it for you to receive help? You give it out all the time. And does it ever um, um, make you feel feel sometimes that you've been shorted sometimes because you do give so much um it's funny you, you this subject actually this topic today um comes up because i i do sometimes you know because i'm always helping um people you know i mean that's what i do in my job you know and here you know at home you know or in my family or things like that or whatever and I mean, that's just what I do. And um, when it's time for me to have, you know, get help or receive help, you know, I just kind of feel, you know, I I, I feel like sometimes, you know, I, I shouldn't have to, I mean, I shouldn't have to ask for it a little bit, you know, but um, it's funny you say Bishop Blake because I swear you, your messages and his messages always line up and it's always on split a topic of something that I'm going through yeah. and yeah. Um, and actually like right now you know again so I mean I, I'm helping my dad with his little you know part time job you know because I don't want him to have to do it on his own because his help is out and so it just kind of humble you um, because he's cleaning offices you know, and so it, it just kind of, you have to humble yourself to, yeah. to do that again, you know, where before, you know, I used to do it and, and didn't think nothing about yeah. it or nothing like that, but um, it just, it just kind of, I mean, I'm helping a lot, you know, I help a lot of people, you know, and it's, and before, like when I was married before, way back then, I was young. We didn't know. We were just paying stuff. You know, we were just doing it. <laughs> we just trying to work it out. But then as you got, as I got older and I was in another more serious relationship, that partnership really, really um, was helpful. Um, we had that conversation. We talked, you know, we, we pulled together on different things. I will say that's one good thing out of the relationship that we, that 
that partnership and collaboration was good when it came either when we traveled, um, yeah. even with bills, especially when I was going to school with LBN. So I will say um, I've had that experience. And so now when I look for partners or not look, but want a partner, that's definitely a topic um, mm -hmm. that needs to be had on that. And like what Miss Kathy's going through, that's definitely a topic that needs to be discussed, you know, because it's just so important to have that, um, that reassuring, you know, that, you know, you want to pick the right partner. Yeah, yeah. And, and you do, you want to make sure that you find givers, you know, uh, especially, and I, I can, I can sense, you know, like, you know, when, when heaviness is, is upon us, heaviness looks different to everybody. You know, sometimes heaviness, um, you know, causes us to um, go into a mind frame that, you know, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not doing this with nobody no more because it seems like everybody, and what we're talking to is about two or three people, you know, it seems like everybody, that's all they want to do is take all the time. And to be honest, I think those people are teaching us a lesson about sharing. Yeah. And sometimes you have to, uh, I hate this phrase, but I'm going to say it. When they say a closed mouth, don't get fed. I do not like that statement at all. <laughs> I know it's true, but a lot of times what the Lord is teaching us to open up our mouths and ask for what it is that we want. Yeah. Because if we have been in a single mind for thinking, whereas we know things have to be done and we get it done, that doesn't mean everybody else has worked in those, in those veins like that. Which takes me to another conversation. I want to circle back around with Mrs. Joyce Lynn. Uh, growing up in two different households, uh, from a single parent home to, I'm not sure if Matt grew up in a single parent home or a two parent home or what, uh, we learned different, um, uh, different um, 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 uh, methods of doing life. Um, sometimes, you know, everybody put all their cereal over here somewhere and, you know, and if it's a milk, you know, uh, you drunk it last one, you need to go buy another bottle of it, you know? And then you have some people that says, oh, we need some milk, let's go buy it. It don't matter who drunk the milk up last or, oh, it's some cereal missing, go pick it up. Growing up in different households, we do look at life a little bit different and we carry that on into our adult world. And we don't realize that it's called partnership. We have to learn how to share in life, but when we don't grow up like that, those things have to be almost taught to us later on. And it can almost be embarrassing mm -hmm. to know that, uh, oh, oh, so the last person that drunk up the milk don't have to go buy no more milk. It's just somebody needs to go get it. So let's kind of talk about that a little bit, Joyce. You know, um, you know, did you, was that a part of any of your learning curves that you had to go through about maybe letting go of selfishness? Because that's the opposite of partnering is selfishness. So let's kind of oh. talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I came from a single parent home. He came from a two parent home. So <laughs> automatically right off the bat, it's just two different perceptions on how things are going to be done. Um, learning. It's so weird, though, because he does have a younger sister, but his mom came from a larger family. So she knows how to share. She said, um, Mac tells me that they shared everything. And um, for me, you know, I didn't have to share much. You know, I told y'all the other day that me and my sister are 10 years apart. If I wanted something of hers, she would just go give me my own. So <laughs> I just didn't have that, you know, let me share aspect. But now, you know, he'll share his food with me or he'll make sure, you know, I get my own meal or if he's going somewhere, he'll give me some too. And I'm just learning how to do that as well. And just trying to have it merged into um, like a family because Quad is just like me. He ain't trying to share. <laughs> so I'm trying to distill that in him right now. And um, yeah, it, it's hard. You know that that's amazing, <laughs> Joyce. Um, I, I was I was um, I was thinking about you yesterday, and I said she has such a big heart. She has a really big heart, and I kept thinking, I said, where'd she get that from? Where did she get that 
wanting to help people out and want to do this and that. And sometimes I think, and just listen to you now, um, sometimes I think it's who you're helping. Mm, yeah. I think sometimes when we've been in a world where we had a lot of takers in life, that our radar is going off. But then sometimes it matters who you're, you're partnering with. And I think sometimes when you partner together with the Max in the world or the other people that are used to the sharing, you have to receive that. Because yeah. if you don't receive it, you will sometimes bankrupt them also because it was it's always about uh, what am I going to get out of it? You know, mm -hmm. different things like that. Uh, so I want to kind of move around. I'm going to go back to Miss Toya because I know Miss Toya may have to drop off quickly. Uh, Toya, have you ever found yourself in spaces like that to where, you know, I know uh, Toya comes from a two parent home that turned to a single parent home. and you know, you you gathered a lot of things from your mom in your early years, and then you had to go and, you know, uh, become almost, um, you, you almost had to become the mom in the house. Mm -hmm. And so it's like everything. It's like, I'm too young for this now, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, but how has that, how... I, I know that sometimes it doesn't always feel good, but tell you how has that benefited you in the long run? Because you had to get some early nuggets in life about surviving. How did that, how can you see that that has helped you in, you know, in the long run in life? Well, it, it, it was hard going through it when we had to go through it, but um, it just helped me to be the person I am today with the heart I have, you know, because I had to basically help my dad raise my, my younger sister. And um, that was that was hard, just going through. And so a lot of things I had to share um, with stuff with her and just kind of deny myself of things, you know, to, to, to help her and make sure she, you know, good and straight, whatever. And, you know, my dad, he, he, we girls at this point um we had a brother but he was older so he helped too so we all had to kind of put in a, a helping hand but mind you now I'm still 16 so I'm I'm 15 at the time so I'm having a the trying to transition as I go through go through that and also try to keep a, a some kind of sense of stability with her um yeah. as we was you know coming up and so, I don't know if I'm really asking your question, answering it right, but I had to um, really just kind of like, more or less, like I said, just deny myself of stuff. And now, now today, I just kind of, the things that I'm going through, I just kind of look at things differently um, yeah. because it, it you know, I think about, you know, the things that I, I went through and, you know, the, com the things I had to go through on my own and, and have to try to figure it out um, and stuff. So, um, and I'm just thankful because God has kept me um, because, you know, I mean, it, it was always, you know, talk where they lost their parent, come on, you know, you know, they, they always have the stigma, oh, well, she, you know, this and that, but I did the opposite. I went to school. I did everything. You know, I was more mm -hmm. determined. I would say, I was mm -hmm. more determined because I didn't. I didn't want that that life like that. Yeah. So it more kind of just kept me on track. And, and now I did things. You know. You know, as I went through life and kid and growing up, but I learned from them. Yeah. So are you you sound you you sound like to me. Uh, that you're learning these things now. It's like, you know, you know how sometimes we have to reckon a thing to be done. All right, this is the first half of my life. You know, right. we had to peel back from a lot of those things, but you know, you know, Lord, let's let's do something different this last half. I, I got that lesson called sharing. I got that lesson called giving to others. You know, mm -hmm. Lord, what does it feel like to receive? That's what I want to learn. And yes. and tell you, is it hard for you to receive sometimes, even when a person gives? Because sometimes you may wonder what their motive is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll be like, 
you know, or I'll say like, you know, someone, it's, it's hard for me to tell, sometimes to kind of like receive it and be like, cause I'm always been like, no, that's okay. You know, cause I'm always thinking of others, you know, they may not be able to, you know, really afford it or, you know, or, you know, or able to do it or do something or whatever. And so I'm always um, thinking of others. Yeah. others looking for, but, and when I really do like, oh, you know, I really could use that and I really could. And for instance, an example is, you know, my cousin, he was staying here with me for a little bit. And so, you know, he was in the, in the process of, you know, moving and everything. And now mind you, he still was here kind of helping, you know, his look part with the bill. Mm-hmm. I it really wasn't nothing. I let him because I want him to, you know, make stack his money and do what he needs to do so he can, you know, move on, you know, yeah. in his own life. But at the end, I was like, well, no, you can go ahead and keep that. And then, you know, just keep it in the end. And so, cause I knew he was in the, really in the process of moving then, but I'm thinking, well, you know, you really could probably still get it, you know, cause <laughs> even- I really <laughs> want you to help out. <laughs> right. Cause I'm thinking like, you know, even in life you still, I don't care if you're moving or whatever you got going on, you still have to pay where you go. But yeah. I'm thinking as, as of him thinking, okay, well now this little bit, you know, he can go ahead and keep that or whatever. So yeah, sometimes I do kind of like put others before me. And I don't really know how to even fix that because I don't know, it just seems like it's just me or I don't know. You know what I think it's gonna I think it's gonna take a big giver coming into your life to show you that there are people that really want to love you and uh give without any strings attached to it and 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 sometimes god may have to snatch us out of that place you know i think there's a place where we have to you know lord i'm gonna give it to you you know i'm gonna i'm gonna give this this desire to receive i have to open up my hands to receive you know i already know how to give but god teach me how to receive but don't let me stop giving because it's the giving that causes the door for the receiving to come right. in, you know, and sometimes it's hard, you know, Shirley said it's hard when you are a giver to receive, but you got to know that that is the spirit of reciprocity. And that's what I want you guys to start uh, thinking about is what goes along with giving. There is always receiving that comes in, you know, and I'm going to say this, and y'all may not think that it's like that. Um, when you are, when you're giving into other people's lives, uh, or you're sowing into other people's lives, sometimes it's a little selfish when we give and God, well, let me put it like this. It can, it can become a hindrance to other people when you give where God told you not to give. And you can tell it because it becomes a weight to you. It's just like what you're saying about your cousin that's your big idea. That wasn't no God idea just to let him do that because it doesn't teach them responsibility. And the way you know it was a good idea, it felt good at first. It like that Chinese food, it tastes good at first, but it wears off after a while. And now we realize, well, dang it, I do need the help. And it could have, it could have been God sending that person into your life, even if it was just a little bit to right. come and take that edge off of you to let you know. You don't need all of it from them or whatever, but teach them the the art of giving. Uh, y'all, this is something that I did with my my children. The kids, uh, Jessica and uh, Demar- Demarcus, Demarcus's family uh, came in. That's what it made me think about with their when Demarcus's family came in. Um, y'all already knew that. I knew they trying to build a house down here. They that was the purpose for them coming to Dallas is to get a fresh start with some things and. And I remember when they first came and, you know, it was, th- their expenses were so daggum high. I don't even know how they lived. I, I don't know how they were living like that, you know, but God kept on blessing and kept on blessing. And uh, so when I told him, uh, DeMarcus said, he said, well, mom, you know, this is the amount that, you know, uh, Sean and I, you know, have agreed upon because they, they talk about everything. This is the thing that we've agreed upon. And so I was like, okay. So y'all, it came down to that was about six months ahead of time came down to it and uh, DeMarcus came back and, and and he said something. I said, well, Mark, let me do this for you. Uh, um, I said, let me, let me just give you an amount. And when I told him what it was, he was like, are you sure? 
And I said, yeah, I said, because God, see, it ain't even the money. It's the teaching them to keep giving, keep your mm-hmm. seed going. Because really what y'all doing is just sowing mm-hmm. seeds. And so as we kept going on, y'all, the house kept being blessed. And uh, next thing I know, um, uh, Shonda, she, she's big at giving. Next thing I know, the part that he thought he was going to be paying, she made up the difference. I don't even think she, I don't even think they knew the other one was doing whatever, but they just had a heart for giving. And I said, that's why y'all keep making money like y'all do all the time. Cause y'all got these big old hearts that keep on giving and keep on giving and keep on good. I'm saying that to say, don't ever don't ever allow people to miss out on their opportunity to be blessed by God. Because see, when they give, they learn the art of sowing. Because really, that's all that it is. Even when people are paying bills in households, we're sowing into one another. We're making sure that we keep things flowing. We keep the heartbeat of this relationship moving forward. And sometimes what we do, we cheat people out of their blessings by doing it for them. And but you have to understand the the concept behind giving and receiving so you could take yourself out of the way and not getting God's way from hindering their blessings. Because you know what will happen to a person like that? They're going to need again because you because they miss the opportunity to give. They'll come back again, though they had all that time with you by yourself, by themselves. And when we don't allow them to participate in it, they're going to come back again. They're going to need some deal because that was God's moment to teach them how to give as well. And I think as parents, we have to learn that even about our children to teach the children responsibility in your marriage. That has to be something that has to be um, sometimes demonstrated. And then you got to wait on God to let them catch it. You can't just do it for people you got to let them catch it sometimes you may think well bills ain't gonna get paid yeah they're gonna get paid because god knows you you're gonna do it and you know that he's gonna provide but remember you are teaching them also the art of giving so that you not feel heavy and you can know when it you'll t- you can tell when it's working because we always say that's good seed that's good soil right there yeah because it's a give and take situation that's taking place among the two so but uh, I think it's always good to help people out, but don't hinder people. Don't hinder people from their from their growth also at the same time. Anybody else want to share? Any of you ladies uh, before we get ready to close out this morning? Um, no, I've just enjoyed the uh, the topic and the conversation this morning. And I, <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh at Todd because like she, she is, yeah, she, she's so given you know, um, allowing her, her, um, what if it's cousin or mm-hmm. nephew, um, to come stay with her. And it wasn't just like a little short stay, like it was an extended <laughs> stay, you know, and, you know, we laughed about it or whatever. I was like, and, so that's how you doing it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you, you just have to, you, um, when you, when you're used to giving, it's, it is, it's, it's hard to ask for help, you know, and it, a lot of, like I hear that a lot of times too, where people be like, Miss Regina, you know, you let somebody help you for a change. You know, it's, that's, that's kind of hard to break that habit. Like if that's, if you're just a, a person that's used to giving and helping someone, it's just kind of like a hard, it's, it's hard to stop. And then it's hard to say, to sit down and say, okay, well, yeah, I'm gonna let you do, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let them do this for me. It's just, it's, it's, it's like mind blowing to me. Yeah, you know, yeah. To try to try to. They, just... they go hand in hand. They really do. I learned this as a hard lesson. Uh, um, I was attending uh, a church in Tyler, and I kept noticing that um, some ain't right. I keep coming up on the short end of the stick somewhere, and I know I'm giving. I'm giving my finance, I'm giving my time, I'm giving all of that. And I keep coming up on the short end of the stick. I said, somebody ain't giving. This is something that I would check in my house. My daughter, my daughter and I both, well, all, all of the kids have been taught to tithe, to give and all that. But Jessica and I have been together the longest with things. And I remember one time we were, we were staying together and um, she something was coming up short. And the first thing we asked, are you tithing? Mm-hmm. I said, if you're tired, then you can go ask God what you want. And sure enough, every time y'all, we looked up, the cover was, when I tell you, it was full. It was full. I said, Jessica, whatever you do, don't ever stop giving. 
because you will know when to stop, when the giving stop, because it's always going to bring, it's going to be bring confusion in the household. It's always going to bring lack in the household because somebody stopped giving. In your relationship, you can tell it too. When when I when when y'all start fussing and fighting, because somebody stopped giving. When we when we start taking our focus off of loving each other, somebody stopped giving. And you have to learn the art of it to give and receive. So now we can go boldly. Hey, we need healing in our relationship. We're givers. We can go and ask God. Right now, what we may need is some wisdom. We need God to give us some wisdom on what to do with that. Uh, Y'all, I was I'm looking at Miss Cookie. Uh, she put a comment in the box. She said, I'm working on the receiving and she loves gift. I just so happen. Let me tell you something. The power of prayer works. It really does work. When you're praying and you may not know that people are, 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 you may not even think nobody cares. And then all of a sudden, one day, somebody just comes down your lane and begins to start talking about the very thing that you've been privately going through or whatever. Um, I'd call Mrs. Cookie yesterday. And we were just talking about some things, trying to get some plans together uh, with, you know, some of the programs, or whatever. And I, at, when I started looking at her, I started thinking, oh, she's not here. She's not present. And I had to stop for a moment and ask some, ask some questions about how are you? How are things going? You know, because sometimes, you know, you know, the first thing, what they want now. <laughs> and um, I was ready to give. And do you know, sometimes you can miss out on a moment because you, 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 you're thinking that everybody's trying to take away from you because that sometimes is the vein that we've been. That's the thing that's holding us down a lot. But ladies, you have to keep your heart open because you just don't know how God, God wants to bless. On another end, Mrs. Joyce Lynn stepped in and Joyce Lynn stepped to help out in some areas with me and a door is opening for me. And the first person I thought of with that door was Mrs. Joyce Lynn. Mm -hmm. That's why I say always keep your hand in giving even when you don't know what's coming on the other side because it's the spirit behind what it is that you're doing. So you don't want to allow a root of bitterness. You don't want to allow every time you turn around. And, and the only reason we get we get frustrated is when lack starts taking place around us. I'm struggling financially. And now all of a sudden I'm noticing, ain't nobody giving to me. Nobody's giving back to me. This is where we have to be very careful uh, with, you know, when we are sowing, where we are sowing to, you want to make sure you sow into places that sow back into you because you could be bankrupt because where you're giving, it may not be a place where your where reciprocity is coming back. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, we, we're gonna we're gonna close out this morning. But next week, I was praying and I was asking God about uh, the message uh, for next week. And y'all, I've been hearing it. It's crazy how when you are a giver, you, all you have to do is ask God for what you need. And sometimes I can wake up to God. Uh, what do you what do you want me to take them um, take them now? You know, we talked about the partnership. We talked about a lot of things. He said, I need you to teach them about the power of prayer. We have not because we ask not. And sometimes we don't think that we're in position to receive, but you don't know the power that comes behind prayer. Prayer will change things, even, you know, but you have to admit where you are at a particular time, you know, see, because the seasons change. Your marriage is good today, but what happens when your marriage gets in trouble tomorrow? Your health is good today, but what happens when your health gets in trouble tomorrow? See, you learn these things in advance so that when the hour comes up on you, that you will always be ready. I got seed already sown. I got the words already put out there. And what we do, we put those two forces together. And before you know it, when something comes up in you, you know what the what the word of God says? He, he said, when the enemy comes up against me, the Lord will lift up a standard against him, which is the word of God. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Every tongue that rises against me shall be condemned. See, because I think we over fight little bitty fights that God said, all you had to do put the word on that. There's no such thing as lack in the kingdom of God, especially to a giver, unless you unless you stopped up your giving somewhere, mm -hmm. unless it was the way that you received it. And so now it's like, well, every time you turn around, I'm always giving somebody else. Why didn't I give me? He's because you're giving in the wrong places. 
The Lord says, put your, put your giving in the right place. Put your mindset on this is kingdom business that we're doing. And everybody that you come in contact with, they need to be kingdom minded. This, this next message that we're getting ready to do for the month of July is going to change y'all's world. Because a lot of stuff that we've been, we've been needing, it was only a prayer away. Prayer can turn that situation with Terry's mother around real quick because it ain't the medicine that's going to help her no way. Medicine is just a, uh, it, it's just like kind of an additive, you know, you know, and I'm not saying we don't need medicine, but as a believer, that's the great thing about the heart of a believer. We believe that at the end of the day, the blood still works. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes that's what God said. I want to stir up your faith. I want to know, do you believe me? to do these things now they be it unto you according to your faith if we don't believe it can be done guess whatever it won't be done and what happened your mouth begins to start speaking what you believe and the power of prayer is going to come in to change all that stuff around so what happened is we're going to get ready to put the spiritual in front of the natural so that we can fight off these fiery darts that that are coming up against us because believe it or not it's in all of our households it's in all of our homes, but prayer is going to be the thing that turns things around. Miss Kathy, do you have any final words? Do any of you ladies have any final words that you want to share on, on this morning before we close out? Um, just that um, I agree with you. Um, and when you start saying that, um, the word from, um, what am I going to say? Um, call those things that are not as though they are. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, um, like what Toya was saying um, about the receiving end, uh, you've heard people say, uh, you know, like if somebody offers you something or want to give you something and, and you you don't want to take it or you refuse yeah. it or something like that, and they'll say, no, nah, I'm giving this to you because you're not going to cut off my blessing. That's, That's not right. what Ms. Exactly. Mary was saying, you know, because <laughs> yes, you right. know, I'm giving it to you because you know, God unction it in my spirit or I'm giving it to you, then I'm going to receive a blessing from somebody else. So if right. I don't get that to you, then I'm, you're going to cut off my blessing. Just like she said, you know, you, you stop God in his track. So we just have to, you know, and I'm uh, preaching to the choir, you know, you just have to be, a, if you're a giver, then you have to be a receiver. So That's God right. is going to sow back into you. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he told us to sow so he's got to get something back to you too. Um, you know, we just have to receive it. And it is hard sometimes when you a giver. I know I saw Shirley put in there that, you know, it is hard to um, receive. And it, it, she she's always worried about not being able to give. Shirley is. Yeah. And I think about her when we go places and stuff like that. She always wants to pay for your stuff and you know, she feels bad when she can't pay for you stuff, you know, and I always tell her, no, you don't have to pay for me all the time. I want to, I want to do it, you know, that's what she <laughs> say. And I say, okay. But then when I say, okay, I don't want her to think that I'm just there to soak up the goodness of her, you know, that's I right. know that she doesn't think that, but I don't want her to think that, you know, and anybody else I go somewhere to eat with, you know, but mm -hmm. I want her to know I'm going to give to you too, you know, and I might not give as often as she does, but I am a giver, you know, but yeah. like, you know, Sister Marilyn said, we have to learn how to receive, receive. and we have, to learn, we have to learn how to give and we have to learn how to receive. So that's right. it goes both ways. So yes, if, I just want to listen, if you are a big giver, you yeah. ought to be a big receiver too. Big receiver. Yeah. If you it's are hard, a big giver, big. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, you ought to listen, be ready to receive real big. You know, it may not come back from where you sold it at. A lot of times that's that's what it is. We think that, well, you know, you, you did one thing in one area. No, 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 no. That's not where it's going to come from. It's going to come mm -hmm. from somewhere else. And you got to leave that seed on the ground. Bless you. That's what that guy was doing with that apple yesterday. He was like, here, I'll take this. Because I'm, you know, that may have been his way of, because I've heard that some other cultures, they take it as an offense when you don't receive things mm -hmm. that they give to you or whatever. And immediately that came to my mind. I said, Meryl, just take the apple whether you yeah. eat it or not, you know, because mm -hmm. I think that was, that was his heart. And uh, that's what I want to leave with us today is that, listen, y'all, um, uh, as, as the head keeps going up, guess what's going to happen? The rest of the body does too. 
the healing, it is the children's bread. And you got to believe God for some supernatural things to be taking place in your life. Y'all, we are, we are not just givers in this room. We're givers of life to people that we give them chances. We give them opportunities. We give hope to people. All of those things are being counted up as righteousness before God. And I want us to make sure that we stay in that position because God really is getting ready to rain on all of us. And I want y'all to be part of that. I can't wait to share some. I hope that I have a great testimony to tell y'all in the days to come. And I tell you, if and and when it happens, I think it's it's the turning point. When I say a real turning point in my life, because this is what I've always heard. When you put the spiritual in place, everything else is going to come. I was telling Cheryl, my girlfriend the other day, I said, Cheryl, I said, uh, God said, put spiritual first. And when you put the, put, when you put the spiritual, she, I said, Every, the husband is going to come. The house is going to come. Finance is going to come. All the other things are going to, but you got to put God first. Make sure you get yourself on some good soil. And I said, watch it start happening just like, so we got this word just like that. As you are lining one thing up, just like that. We're going to make sure to put the power of prayer in just like that. We're going to see God doing some amazing things. So I'm saying to y'all, just like that, God is going to be opening up some doors for us all. And open. make sure you, you have a heart to not ask questions. Lord, why is that happening to me? What they want? All that. No, just know that your seeds went out to get something. And uh, God will be, uh, be blessing you along the way. Well, I want to say thank you so much, ladies, for joining in with me this morning. Uh, we're going to get ready to close out. And thank y'all so much for your time of posting. Y'all, Miss Kathy is going to be stepping down for a little bit uh, from our hosting in the morning times on Tuesday morning. So we got another partner coming in with Miss Regina. And uh, I just believe we ought to just say thank you so much to Miss Kathy and to let her know that we are praying for her. And we've got her, Terry, the whole family, you know, in our heart. I know she and Terry are always big in my heart, always praying for them. And uh, you just never know what God is able to do, even through things like this. God works major miracles, even in our lives. So, you know, we don't want to go tell God what to do, how to do it, whatever, but we receive his blessings on the other side of it. And uh, we just thank you. Thank you so much for such a big heart, Kathy, always wanting to be there. And I know you're going to be right there with us and we praying for you every step of the way and uh, to keep praying for us too <laughs> over here. So, but we will see you in the latter days and uh, we look forward to you coming back real soon with us. Amen. 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 All right. Well, y'all, we're going to get ready to sew and close out this morning. I'm going to get ready to get back on this road in just a little bit, uh, heading back home. Uh, but we're praying on Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, or sewing on Isaiah 33 and 6 on today. Isaiah 33 and 6. And, and then we're going to talk about next week's uh, conversation where we're talking about prayer. Uh, I have actually uh, put the um, upcoming uh, topics in our little private chat room uh, that all of our leaders and hosts are in. Uh, but we're coming from Isaiah 33 and six. He said, he will be the firm foundation for their entire lives. He will give them all, give them all of the wisdom, knowledge and saving power that what they will ever need. He said, respect for the Lord is the key to open up that treasure. Isaiah 33 and six again. He will be the firm foundation for their entire lives. Everything we do, we're going to be resting in God. He will give them all of the wisdom that they need, the knowledge, the saving power. You got people in your life that ain't saved or, you know, maybe God need to, you know, do some things in your life. He said, and they will, that they will ever need, but you got to learn how to respect God is going to be the key to the trade. That means when God says move, move. When God says give, give. When God says go, go. When God says stop, stop. Whatever it is that the Lord says to do. Y'all, it, it would have been so easy for me to keep those AirPods in my ear because I wanted to hear that message. I've been waiting all morning to get a quiet place to hear that message. But I do believe God had a greater message called mankind. And sometimes learning how to do life with people is so important to God. And we have to learn how to live on that type of a firm foundation with him, that whatever you say, Lord, whether it be word or indeed, help us to do those things that's unto you. And that's what we do here with Breakfast of Champions. Uh, we give our very lives to even getting up early in the morning time and 
uh, praying the blessings of God over our lives and believing God for others. I'm believing God for so many of y'all. Um, there, there are many in the room that are desiring mates. There are many in the room that are desiring peace in their home. Let's just be honest about a peace in your home. Uh, you are des uh, desiring plans for your business, you know, maybe relaunching something again. You got prayers going out for your family members. A lot of people, I have family members that are not saved. Let's not complain about that stuff another day. Let's just remember that he will be the firm foundation for their entire lives. For everything that you need, God is going to be the foundation for it. So uh, what we do, we learn how to rest in God. We know in that he that has began this great work in us, he's going to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And what I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I want to be a good example to them. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry for marriage. I'm not in a hurry for all of it because I don't have nothing to prove to nobody. But I want to be a good example to people to let them know that a certain Lord pays off. And their healing is the children's bread. Whatever it is that I stand in, God knows how to supply what I need when I need to when I need to have it. So I don't let people put pressures on me when, Miss Marilyn, when, when the Lord says it, when the Lord is ready for it, because the Lord's not going to give me nothing before time. I, what I'm going to do is learn how to keep on giving and learning how to receive, because God could give me something, then I miss out because I don't know how to receive. I'm in the wrong place. I'm talking about the wrong things. I am cursing what God has blessed. All of that. I want to be in the right place at the right time. So we're sewing on this Isaiah 33 and 6. For those of you that would like to give, we're going to be praying over those this morning. But before we leave, I just want to say thank y'all so much for such a wonderful week. Uh, if somebody can put the uh, links in the chat box. I know they've been having problems with Cash App out there. But from what I understand, they have fixed whatever the problem is. Uh, with it. Um, I, we're going to chance it today. Hopefully that'll um, be okay. But if not, you can always go to the website, www.MarylandNeeServices.com. And I want everybody to try to get something on the ground, you know, just to say, you know what, God, this, and I know it ain't about the money. It's about, you know what, I want to come in fellowship. I want to come into an agreement with this group as well. These ladies are growing and God, you're doing a lot of things in their lives. And I want to see these things done in my life too. I don't want to always sit back on the sidelines. You know, I want to grow. I want to be, I want to do things like Miss Felicia does. I want to do things. I want to step up like Miss Regina. You know, Miss Regina is getting over uh, grief and loss in such a way. She's finding her voice. You know, I, I find myself being like Miss Jocelyn. Miss Jocelyn don't look nothing like she did when she first, you know, came into the room. I want to come into partnership like Miss Joyce and Miss Felicia and Mrs. Charday. I want to do that. You know, I want to find that fellowship. I want to find that good relationship like a lot of the ladies are talking about. I, I want to do that, God. I want to come into agreement. Lord, I want to be used by you. As a matter of fact, I want me and my husband to see to me that's the testimony when i get married i want me and my husband to serve that to me that's not a good testament when i got it for me but i didn't get it for us i want us to be able to do some things together you know i want us to have that heartbeat that comes from god and lord i'll wait i'm not in no hurry i'll wait on you you know i'm not looking at everybody else as being no examples to me i i know I know what the heartbeat of God feels like. And I know when it is a God idea and it's a good idea. You know, I want to make sure that it lines up because when it's a good idea, me and my children are growing. We're all coming into the fellowship of this. We're all serving in the kingdom of God. And God, I want to wait on you. I don't want to move before time with anything. My partnerships, I'm sowing on behalf of my partnerships too. You know, I want to make sure that I'm running into the company of great people. Y'all, I'm sewing on behalf of this, this uh, opportunity that's coming before me that is mind blowing. And uh, I've been doing it for a long time, but I ain't never done it like this before. And uh, I'm praying God put my thing up at the top up there. And Lord, keep teaching me my why. You know, my latter days, all I want to do is consult. All I want to do is share. All I want to do is give, you know, but I want to run into people that find your worth also that don't look at you as a cheap carbon copy of something. No, I have a, an original worth and I want somebody that recognizes it. And then I want them to see even greater than what I see. That's what I call the blessings of the Lord. They come in and make us rich and they add no sorrows to our lives. So we're sewing on that and uh, we're going to get ready to close out this morning. I hope 
that you guys have really received. I'm going to take two people that may want to share a testimony today on giving and what God has done for you. While you, you know, every time that you give, it opens up a door for you and you can't even explain what's happening. I'm going to take two people, anybody that wants to go forward, testifying about giving. Amen. Ms. Robin, I see your seed relaunching. Ms. Donisha, I see yours. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Shirley. Good morning. Um, I can't, um, well, <laughs> I just want to say that, you know, I'm, I'm a strong giver and oh. I've been going through a little whatever, but in spite of, it won't stop me from giving. I may can't give to people what I used to, but I'm still I still love giving. If it's nothing but giving a prayer, yeah, giving a song, giving a smile, you know, because it's not always about money. Yeah, but that's right. I love to give whatever I can. And I thank God that I'm still able to do something in some type of way, in some type of form, or some type of fashion. And never give up because I know some of us on here sometimes want to give up. It's too much, but never give up. Breakthroughs yeah. always come through. They always come through. Amen. So don't give up. And Kathy, we love you. We are here for you. You know I am. And to help relieve your stress, you can yes. come to the house with me. So <laughs> yes. So yes, yes, we with you and we love you. Love Amen. you, ladies. And guys. I mean, love you too, Shirley. And yeah, I'm I'm with Shirley on that, Kathy. Be sure, reach out, whatever. I don't care what it is. You just need to talk. Sometimes you just, Miss Merrill, I just want to talk. That's all. You know, it's so heavy, you know. And uh, being able to have those people, I talk to y'all all the time, but make sure you keep your lifeline in place. You know, get your lifelines on board with you so that the Lord can... Uh, meet you halfway and don't forget you know uh prayer goes a long way sometimes when you can't get them pray god god knew how to get them on the phone <laughs> he knows how to do it and Shirley, um i got something else for you and I, because i think god is gonna uh show you that there's i know you already know but there are different levels of serving different levels of serving and i think this one is going to bring much much joy to you uh because you love people so much and sometimes God said, I don't have a problem with you giving. I don't have a problem with you giving it all. I'm going to show you a more excellent way to go about doing it. I'm going to teach you how to serve. Giving and serving, two different things. I'm going to teach you how to serve. And I'm going to teach you how to serve with a spirit of excellence everywhere you go. And it's going to open up doors. for Because all you need to do is get in front of the right person. That's all you need to do. And I want y'all to pray some bold prayers. Even if got to be silent, pray a bold prayer. You don't like that job you own? You ain't got to be faking and shaking that. Tell, don't tell everybody else your business. Remember, I tell you, I don't be complaining. But go tell God about it. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. It doesn't fit me well. It doesn't, um, it's not fit for the kids. You know, um, um, yeah, tell God about it. It ain't, it ain't taking away nothing from it. It's just saying, you know what, God, I think I've, I've grown that, <laughs> you know, I think I've outgrown those things, but I see God doing some great things. Well, I'm I'm calling off the name. I keep looking down because I'm seeing y'all continue to keep giving. Uh, and I don't want everybody to do it. I want to say this to you. Um, if you finally got a door open and it's like, well, I'm going to, you know, I got to go over here and protect everything I got because I don't never want to be back in that place again. The way to never be back in is to be a giver. That's the only way that I've learned. Don't never let nothing, nothing you're going through, anything stop you up from giving there. So, but anyway, we're going to go through to Mr. Tanisha Bright. I see your seat. Let me go from the bottom. Um, Let's see. Mrs. Tanisha, I see you. Ms. Rob, Ms. Robin, I see you, you gave twice on here. Uh, relaunching. I see that she wants to relaunch. Look like her business. Uh, Mrs. Tanisha, uh, for resting. Yeah, in a lot of different ways. I can see that. Miss Re Miss Regina Oliver, um, thank you for your seat. Amen. She's sewing on Isaiah thirty three and six. Mrs. Donisha Warren, yeah, on Isaiah thirty three and six. Donisha, I got something for you too. 
uh, Mrs. Mrs. Latoya Hanson. She's sewing in Isaiah 33 and 6. My prayer is that God will restore you, restore your joy for giving. Don't ever stop up your joy for giving. You know, just, just, just use it in a way. All right, God, teach me how to be a, a good servant of what you've given to me, whether it be my house, my home, because um, everybody knows you're a giver. But let's be a good servant in giving that I give what God tells me to give. Mrs. Anita, I see you there. Amen. Miss Shirley, I see you. She says she wanted it all back and it's coming too. She said, my husband, my family, and my finances, they're all coming. Be bold enough. Y'all, this whole time that we're going to be praying about, be, be entering into this season of prayer, I dare you. I dare you to go and ask God for what you want. He already knows anyway. I dare you. And as the moderators or the teach the, the instructors are coming in, I dare you. Ask them for what you want. You need peace in your heart, peace in your mind. You need them chill, them cheering, to be acting, acting right. <laughs> you haven't talked enough. Your words ain't getting it. You need to come into partnership with God. Not partnership, but you need to come into fellowship with God in prayer. Talk, talking too much. You need to be praying more. Amen. So next week, we've got uh, Monday, we got Mrs. Cookie and myself will be hosting. On Tuesday, we got Miss Regina Oliver and Shelly Roman that's going to be hosting. Uh, on Wednesday, we got Mrs. Felicia Johnson and Mrs. Tanisha uh, Bright hosting. On Thursday, it will be Miss Latoya Hansen and F Mrs. Felicia Lee. And on Friday, Mrs. Nene Houston and Mrs. Joyce Lynn Davis. We got a couple of birthdays coming up as well. We have Mrs. Uh, Tina, um, Tina Smith, July 18th, and Mrs. Tamika Franklin, July the 22nd. Our topic for the week is going to be the power of prayer for the month of July. It's going to be the power of prayer. Uh, Sabrina and I are going to come in on Monday and talk about the foundation in prayer, developing a foundation that's teaching us how to pray, uh, the benefits of prayer, what are the scriptures that we need to pray, uh, building a life of consecration, because you did really do need to mix up some stuff, a concoction. Uh, to where you get yourself into a place to where God can hear your prayers, because sometimes you could just be in the wrong, you could be on a wrong, in a wrong place praying and everything keep on, you know, interfering and you're not sitting still. You need to get into a right place, meaning get you a prayer closet, uh, get on the road and ride, whatever, get that, get that foundation right. On Tuesdays, it's going to be Harlan and I, we're going to talk about praying for your partner. Whether that be your married partner or your partner to come, whether it be in business and marriage or whatever. Wednesday, Miss Jocelyn, Charday, and Felicia is going to talk about praying in difficult times. Everything ain't always, you don't always pray in good times. You got to pray ye always because things are subject to change. Everything is not always as it, as it looks like. Those are just, you know, what they say, you can't see the forest for the tree, but your foundation is prayer. Meaning no matter what, I continue to pray. If it's quiet, doing something, whatever, continue to keep praying. On Thursdays, uh, Zach and Andrew is going to talk about the evidence of prayer. This is what it looks like when you pray, especially during hard times. And then on Friday, I want to join with Mrs. Sharday Lister and Mrs. Felicia Lee. We're going to talk about connecting hearts through prayer connecting hearts through prayer. So that's what we are for the upcoming week. Uh, I pray that you guys will be sure to invite others in with us and just know that God, he's hearing your prayers. And some of us are what we call starting all over again. It's okay. It doesn't matter that you're starting all over again. Just get in the flow. Some of us have jumped out of the flow, you know, for whatever reason, we don't got offended by something. Come on now, you're bigger than that. You can't take everything personal. It probably wasn't even about you anyway. And everything, you got to remember, first of all, everything that happens happens uh, to you has to come through God first. No man can do anything. It has to come through God. Isn't that what he told Job? Have you considered my servant? Told Satan, have you considered my servant, Job? So if you're going through something, you may think people are taking everything out on you. Seem like it's always people picking on me, all that. It had to come through God if you're a child of God. And you can't keep saying, well, you know, I rebuke, I, what they say, I rebuke that. You may be rebuking God's correction too. 
So you always want to go back and check it through God. And sometimes our foundation uh, has to be uprooted and we got to put down a solid foundation to make sure whatever you do is in Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I think I saw a couple of more seeds come through. Um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Nene. Okay. That's the last thing. Mrs. Robin Boone, thank you so much for that. This is what the Lord told me last Friday, that there are some in the room that that God keeps putting these people on your heart and you want to sow on behalf of them. There's so many people are struggling in some areas and you wanted to sow for, that's what I kept hearing on, on last Friday because everybody doesn't feel like they have it. They don't have enough strength. And what we're doing, we're standing in proxy for these people so that they can gain their strength to do whatever needs to be done. So those of you that are sowing on behalf of others, and uh, I've got one lady, I've already um, got some things in motion for her uh, that I want to, um, I want to, I, I just want to, I just want to get her out of a place. I need, I need you to get out of that place called lack. And no such thing as lack on a child of God's heart. There, there's no such thing. I want you to find somebody in the room. I got a couple of people, as a matter of fact, I, I need to snatch you up out of that. There's no such thing. You, you, you too powerful in God to be lacking anything. You bring your heart and mind together on one court. So if there's anybody that you would like to sow on behalf of, feel free to do that. But we're going to go ahead and close out this morning. And I just want to say thank you to everyone. Amen. All right. Well, Father, we thank you so much. First of all, I want to thank you for safe travel, uh, getting to Houston. Thank you so much for such great conversations. And thank you for thinking of me, God, you know. Uh, sometimes I can have a heavy week and um, sometimes I don't know how to shut the files down. I don't know, um, you know, sometimes I don't know what needs to be done or whatever, but I thank you that you always look beyond the faults. You always see the needs that I have in my life. And oftentimes you bring people in, they come in, they come in and restore, they come in to rebuild. And really all I had to do was give a yes to it all. I had some other things that I wanted to do, you know, as far as work is concerned. But thank you for teaching me the difference between, you know, when the spirit is calling up on me. You know, somebody else could have taken that assignment to take this young man to Houston, but I think it was my assignment to do that. And thank you so much for, um, you know, causing the concerns last week and uh, giving me an opportunity to step back. I do believe that that was a seed that was being sown. It was so much virtue pulled out that uh, that seed is going somewhere. And I don't know what it's going to get on both of our lives, but we both were givers and takers at, and receivers at that time. And God help us to stay away from that word called taking. We either giving or receiving. No man takes our life. We lay it down. So, Father, I pray that you would help us to be on both sides of the track. Teach us how to give and receive at the same time. Help us to go back this week and uh, catch the nuggets of what was shared. Uh, some of us, we were here, but we wasn't here. We were on the line, but we wasn't on the line. We got so many distractions going on. Some of them distractions are in our head. We got so many conversations going on about what people think and, you know, and we want to interject in, oh, I can do it better than that. And we're making all kind of false accusations. The enemy putting all kind of things in our mind, telling us folks don't like us and, you know, all that kind of stuff. We're so bombarded that we can't hear. It's called distraction. And so, Father, we come against that right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you would help us to know that only what we do for Christ can let us so settle those thoughts down. That stuff is not real. That's just that fear. Fear of something happening, fear of losing my place, of feeling fear that people are not going to receive me, or you know, fear that I'm not going to receive a love back. Just teach us how to give. And when we give, it shall be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running. No, if we need friends, you told us to show ourselves to be friendly. If we want to receive something, you told us to give, and it shall be given to us. Father, even in that area called love, Father, sometimes we got to learn how to have some compassion because it's not always what it looks like. And Father, more than anything, God, put, help us to keep a muzzle over our thoughts, not just our mouth, but our thoughts. 
Help us to learn when to say something and when not to say something, because everything that's being thrown out, some of those thoughts hadn't even been thought through by others. And I pray, Lord God, that as we are even listening and, you know, sometimes we can get heavy with the thoughts of other people and then we start projecting it up on others. No, let us take a ride somewhere. Wash that stuff up off of us, creating us a clean heart, renew the right spirit so that we can restart our businesses, so that we can go in and out and ask for what we want, so that we can make room for those mates to come in so that we can come in and humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, so that we can, you know, understand that, you know, there are times when it's my time to give and it's my time to receive. Help me to know the difference between the two. But whatever you do, God, allow peace to come in my heart. We just want the peace of God that surpasses even our own understanding. So, Father, as we get ready to move forward on this day, I want to call these names back out to you know what these seeds meant more than I do. I can't, I, I'm not a mind reader, but uh, you know what the heart of it is. Uh, Mrs. Nene, Mrs. Robin is sewing on behalf of her on today. Miss Kathy Mitchell, sewing on behalf of her family. Miss Shirley Clark, on behalf of everything that's going on around her. Mrs. Anita Johnson, just, just sewing just because I think it was, it's just by faith. I say that I don't have it, but I'm trusting you, Lord God. I want to give something. I just want to walk in obedience. Miss Latoya Hanson, we're praying. She said, good partnership. I love it. Miss Robin Boone again, relaunching. Miss Donisha Warren, giving her the desires of her heart. I'm praying that Donisha will get away from that fear that's upon her heart. She got too much inside of her, Lord God. Miss Regina Oliver, just keep on increasing her faith. Help her to keep walking by faith and not by sight. Help her to trust and believe, Lord God, that you're well able to do what you say you're going to do. And then Mrs. Tanisha Bright, Father, give her the fortitude to rest in you. She's already, you've already got this thing laid out. I pray that all, I pray that her job assignment will become her ministry assignment. Help her not to ever look at that assignment as a job anymore, but look at it as ministry. She's not going to work. She's going to minister. So, Father, prepare her to be ministry on the inside. When she gets up in the morning time, help her to prepare her heart, help her to pray for her clients, pray for those she's going to come in contact with, help her to give her the right words that she needs, so help her to be a good listener. And then, Lord God, when it's all over, help her to reconcile her books at the end of the day. Father, how did we do? Anything that we need to improve on? Father, I heard something. I don't know what to do about it. So, Father, we're we're bringing all these things before you. And, Father, I'm even praying on behalf of myself on today. There's some things I'm standing in the need of. Oh, God. And I don't know anybody that can bring it in but you. So I'm trusting, Lord God, that your word is forever the same. You are forever today, same today as you were yesterday and forevermore. Father, I believe that you're able to give good gifts to your children. I believe that you can take us beyond our wildest expectation. I believe, Lord God, that everything that I'm standing in need of is getting ready. It's already supplied. I'm just going to walk into it. Father, I'm thanking you for everybody that's going to be coming into an alignment with this blessing. Father, I pray that you would teach me how to share with others this gift that you have given to me called be called called, uh, uh, called sharing in the body of Christ. And Father, even so much to give them the platform and the stage to do what needs to be done. Father, I can take the background. You know, that's not a big deal to me. But Father, I want to help to serve others. I want to push people forward. I want them to know they can do all things through Christ that strengthens them. I want them to know that when good partnership comes together, we can do anything. And Father, help us to remember that when we come together, that we're better together, that we are apart. So we take care of this space. We don't take this space for granted in any kind of way, but we take care of it. That means we're thinking about each other all day long because we got to do life together. And so, Father, I just bless you in this. I think the more I think about this assignment, the happier I'm getting. And it all makes sense at the end of the day. So, Father, just creating us a clean heart, renewing us the right spirit. Help us to teach transgressors your ways. Till we meet again, Lord God, bless all of our leaders, Mr. Harlan Bell. Mr. Zach and Mr. Andrew, uh, Ms. Sharday, Ms. Felicia, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Joyce Lynn, and all of our mentees, all of our hosts that are coming in, even the new ones that are coming in, shift the atmosphere. We're going into a new place. 
doing new things. We pray for our relational real talk group, Mr. Joe and Mrs. Faith and Father, Mrs. Nikki, all of those that are involved in that, Miss Felicia and Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Um, um, Tanisha Bright, praying that you will continue to bless them. Father, we also lift up Naomi's love. We're getting ready to start back in. We're going in for that last fight, God. We still believe that marriage is honorable. We still believe that you got a major blessing for us. Father, help us to get prepared. Help us to get suited up. Help us to get ready for this thing we've been asking for. And Father, be so careful to give you the glory, honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank y'all so much for joining in this morning. I'm going to jump over to morning motivation for a few minutes, and then I'm going to have to get on this road and head back home. So thank y'all so much. I look forward to coming back to you on next week in Jesus' name. Amen.